all of the wireless communication technologies that I've talked about in another video and I've listed here below are all forms of the same thing. They all have one thing in common and that's that they are based on electromagnetic waves. So let's talk just a little bit about something about electromagnetic waves. Um, they are made up of photons which we know of as light but um, we're going to include the entire spectrum of electromagnetic waves not just visible light so we're not just talking about visible light because there is a whole range of frequencies or wavelengths which are opposites of the same thing uh, that uh, some of which are visible some of which are radio waves some of which are x-rays and so on so we're just going to call them light whether they are the visible portion of light or other portions of these photon waves in this Feynman diagram there are two black dots here and these are particles that are taking on or giving off an electron and during the process of taking on or giving off an electron they produce these waves now these waves don't have any mass and they are not reliant on any mass they simply transfer this interaction between these particles as the as the particles take on and give off electrons this is an electromagnetic wave now this is very different from a physical wave a physical wave loses energy as it travels and it's made up of of particles that have mass water for example so you can see a wave travel through water um, you can also see a wave travel or or experience a wave traveling through air so you can hear a wave traveling through air so those are physical waves the thing with physical waves is that they lose energy and they are not quite the same as electromagnetic waves in that manner. Electromagnetic waves, uh, when they uh, travel, they do not lose energy. They travel forever. And they also travel in a vacuum so that they can travel through space forever and ever and ever. They can even travel around on the Earth forever and ever and ever. Now, if that's true, uh, if they travel forever, then why don't we hear waves, uh, electromagnetic waves that were generated uh, you know, 12 billion years ago when we turn on our radio? Well, there's a reason for that, and that is that they spread out. And as they spread out, they um, lose energy in any given from any given position. We're going to talk about that again in a minute. But one other interesting thing about how these particles interact is that, or I should say how these waves interact with particles, is that when they are not in a vacuum, when they are traveling through, say, a fiber optic cable, which also carries electromagnetic waves in the form of light, uh, they interact with those particles. Those particles absorb the wave and then retransmit that wave again. This takes time and slows the speed of travel. So they don't travel at the speed of light when they're traveling through particles. But in space, they would travel at the speed of light. In a vacuum, they would travel at the speed of light. Now let's talk again about this, this spreading out. So if you can imagine this antenna here and this receiver over here, well, you can see that this antenna is generating uh, waves, uh, these electromagnetic waves, in all directions. And as they travel outward this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger well we're spreading out that energy and as we spread out that energy from the standpoint of this receiver it appears to be getting weaker and weaker and weaker because more energy is going elsewhere than where this receiver is and eventually it gets so weak that it becomes undetectable now we do detect light from the ends of the universe however uh, the radio waves that are interacting with particles around them uh, just become uh, so weak by spreading out that we can no longer detect them with our radio so that's why we don't hear uh, radio programs that were generated you know, in 
in the early days of radio still on your radio today when you turn it on because those things are spread out so much that they are undetectable by that radio receiver. However, we can detect um, light from distant points in space uh, with this very sensitive equipment that is very different from our radio receiver. All right, now I, I know that all this is confusing, and as Richard Feynman, who I mentioned back up here in the Feynman diagram, uh, once said in a lecture, uh, nobody understands it. Basically what he said was that third year physics, uh, graduate physics students, it takes the, they don't even introduce this whole concept of quantum electrodynamics or, or um, electromagnetic uh, waves until the third year of graduate physics and that the students never understand it. And as he said, the reason they don't understand it is the professor doesn't understand it. Um, and by the way, Feynman was a Nobel uh, Prize winning physicist who won the Nobel Prize for helping to develop the quantum electrodynamics or electromagnetic uh, theories that we now have. Um, so uh, I'm not going to argue with him. Well, I'd win anyway, and I'd win because he's dead and he can't really form very good counter arguments uh, in that state. Uh, but if he were alive, he would win, certainly. Uh, but I know that all this is very confusing. But the big takeaways I want you to take away from this is this, that waves or electromagnetic waves that our radios, uh, our Wi-Fi and all of that uh, generate and receive travel forever and they travel without matter. They do not require any kind of water or air or other molecules in order to travel. They can travel through space and they can travel forever.